Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You are listening to the voice of God's oracle. Bullerin will Lucas, the set man of oracle of God prophetic ministry, commissioned and ordained by God, been raising end time armies for the demonstration of God's power. We welcome you to another encounter with God via his anointed. Be blessed as you keep listening and sharing this kingdom mystery. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Wherever you are listening to me from, you are blessed. It's a good time again in the presence of God. We thank God for another privilege again. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your voice. I appreciate the Lord this morning. I give him all the glory. I don't know you may be morning to your own side, maybe night to your own side. Any hour you are right now, just give God the glory. Let us thank him. It is the voice of God's oracle, Bolan Walukas, um, the set man of Oracle of God Prophetic Ministry Incorporation. God bless you. I'll be speaking to you on the message titled Altar of Gratitude. Altar of Gratitude. I want you to know that I've been opening some mysteries about altar, and then this altar of gratitude. Is an altar that is very mysterious to the body of Christ. It is a special altar that is very vital in divine program. Altar of gratitude. It is an altar of God expectation from man that will never be placed on demand. Let me reverse. Let me repeat myself. Altar of gratitude. It is an altar of God's expectation from man that is not placed on demand. It can never be. God is expecting something from you, but God will not demand it from you. That is they simply mean what I'm trying to say. It is a, an altar where God is expecting some appreciation from you. Due to one or good things that he has done for you, and then, but God will not demand it from you. Out of gratitude, it is fulfilling divine expectation in order to assess its manifestation and glorification. It is fulfilling divine expectation in order to assess its manifestation and glorification. Altar of gratitude. God is expecting every child of God to raise this altar, to build this altar unto him. But God will never demand this altar from us. Because I will take my Bible text from the book of Genesis chapter 8 again. Genesis chapter 8. And then when we read from verse 15 so that we can get a clearer interpretation of this message. So that we can have a clear interpretation, a clear interpretation of it. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth out of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy son, and thy son's wife with thee. Bring forth with thee living things that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth and noah went forth his and his son and his wife and his son's wife with him every beast every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creeped upon the earth after their times went forth out of the ark and noah builded an altar unto the lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar and the Lord smelled sweet sour and the Lord said in his heart I will not again cause the crack anymore for my sake for the imagination of man's heart are evil from his youth neither will I again smite anyone every living things. here we saw where God told Noah to come out of the ark God said to not come out of the ark because that was after the flood of 40 days and 40 nights then God told Noah okay now I stop the rain now you come out of the ark and noah came out of the ark and he could discover that it was only him 
and his family that is on the surface of the earth god have wiped away all the creators of the earth millions of souls were wiped off the earth he remained only noah and his family and noah look at it god never tell noah god never told noah noah raised me an altar of gratitude no god god never says so god does say to noah god said to Noah, come out of the ark that's in, that's the story. go out of the ark but noah having the mind of gratitude noah took a step by raising an altar to appreciate god for his goodness in his life god never god expect it but god will never demand it God expect this altar from me and from you, but God will never request it from us. It's in this oh, it's in the New Testament also. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, we had the story of the ten lepers from verse 12 to 19. Ten lepers came. Jesus Christ was returning in a certain place, and he come and he came across the ten lepers in verse 12. As he entered into a village, he met in ten men that were lepers. Who stood afar off and they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And then he had mercy on them and he healed them. But out of these ten, only one returned to say thank you, to, 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 to appreciate Jesus' goodness. And verse 15 says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his heart at his feet giving him thanks and he was a samaritan and jesus answered and said were there are not ten cleansed but where are the remaining nine they are not found that return to give glory to god save this stranger and he said unto him arise and go thy way thy faith and made the world here we saw another picture of act of utter of gratitude jesus healed ten people he was expecting them to come and say thank you to come and glorify him appreciate his finger in their life but it's only one that returned this one man that returned make us to understand some facts we open our eyes to understand some things about jesus that jesus have been expecting and that's why jesus Christ answered in verse 17 luke 17 17 why dear not ten cleansed but where are the nine? Simply mean is the expecting the nine to return back to him to appreciate him. Let me tell you, anytime you see a strange hand of God upon your life, I'm talking about a, a sign that is not common, miracle that is not common, sign that is not common. God is expecting you to raise an altar of gratitude. Maybe you are looking for a job and you get a job. You, you know how many years it take you you are on the street looking for a job hunting for a job then god now give you one job god is expecting you to come back and raise an altar of gratitude to him so that you can see more of his finger in your direction maybe you built house at the age of 30 and your father never had that opportunity in your history it has never occurred to any man like that in your father's house but you are privileged to be the number one to build house at the age of 30. Look at your age and look at the miracle of God in your life. God is expecting you to return back to him to come and raise an altar of gratitude so that he can tell you some mystery about your future that is not yet revealed to you. Anytime we raise altar of gratitude, God is with God. God, God will be very happy. There are many things he wants to do. That was why Jesus Christ told the man, he said, and go. Jesus Christ said, go. He sent the man to go. Arise, go thy way. You have been made whole. Simply mean, there is a perfection process in the life as you go. There are some level of perfection that you will never reach in life until you raise an altar of gratitude. You are counting thousands now. But God wants to turn you to a millionaire. But you should remember some times ago, you hardly see 100 naira to eat it. God wants you to raise an altar of gratitude. You bought a car. Look at your age. Go and ask your forefather, when what age did they buy a car? Some never have potential of riding one. God is expecting you to return back and raise an altar of gratitude to break this yoke, that yoke on the neck of your children's children. He is expecting it, but you never requested for it. So, altar of gratitude. 
it is a matured and advanced way of thanking God, celebrating his faithfulness before sharing public testimony. Public testimony is good. God gives something to you, you come to the altar. Father, thank you. I've been looking for us by many years and I have not now. God has done it. No, don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. It is good to share testimony before the public, but let me take you to the advanced way of sharing it. Before you come to the public, you need to first go and raise an altar of gratitude to God in the secret. When God smells those odor, you only hear your, your word of testimony. He didn't smell any odor through your testimony. Don't make a mistake. It is through altar of Noah that God smell when he burnt the sacrifice. The odor moved down to God. Your voice don't bring odor to him. Your voice bring noise to him. You cry unto him. But now, this ad, when you are giving, when you are raising altar of thanksgiving, you are raising a, an order of smell for any time you release a sacrifice for what God has done in your life. That's significant miracle. I'm not telling you to raise altar for every miracle. Every significant one, the one that you know that, yes, this is not my power. This is God. It's too raw in your life. You are praying there's somebody during the time I shared I preached this message in the church. There, there was a lady, there was a woman who who, who has who has been pregnant for two years. And anytime it got to the clinic or to the lab, uh, the, the lab, there we told her that you can't find anything in your womb. And there is a baby in the womb, and there was no baby, and, 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 and they could not find baby in her womb for some times. And it kept on coming. I told her there is a baby inside your womb. And the name is Shukode. He says, there's a, man, a boy inside your womb. He's a prophet. And later, after two years, consistent prayer was going on. Healing was going on. Deliverance was going on. And God performed the miracle. She was about to hang herself on the day that God perfected her miracle. That kind of miracle is significant miracle. It's not common. It's not common. So that kind of thing needs altar of sacrifice. I pray the Lord will give you an understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. On many occasions, I preach to you, I've raised altar of gratitude because why? I know where I'm coming from. Who am I? A Muslim boy preaching to you now. Who am I? It's a privilege. So, it's, so you must know that this altar, God, do, God will never ask, but God will be looking at you as an ingrate. There are many ingrate pastors. There are many ingrate bishops. There are many ingrate apostles. There are many ingrate sons and daughters of God. God is looking at you as an ingrate. You, you share public testimony, but you never raise a private altar unto God to appreciate his finger in your life. Public testimony is good, but private altar is best. That is the best. Mature way of, of praising God. I see God taking you to that realm in the name of Jesus Christ. How can I raise this altar? Because this altar, the man you must know. To raise this altar, you have to have a clean sacrifice. A clean substance. In Genesis chapter 8, Bible makes us to understand in verse 20, that, that Noah took clean beast. He took clean beast from the, from among the beasts and he raised it and offered it unto the Lord. So he take clean this clean clean this simply mean you need to prepare a clean offering, not robbing somebody and use it to re-sacrifice, not stealing money from somebody and now use it to re-sacrifice. You do somebody, you now want to use it to re-sacrifice. It's not clean. That money is not clean. That money is bloody. So it must be a clean sacrifice, something that come out from your sweat, something that come out from your labor. It must be from your sweat. If that is how it can be clean. So the seed you want to raise for it must be clean. Then number two thing. What after you have made some expenditure, after you have made some expenses, run some expenses, you're not bringing something remnant to God. No. You, this one, that's why you need to go through the Noah procedure. You, you go through the Noah procedure. The clean one first, then the burnt offering. Something that we burn. Not every, not every seed burn. Not every sacrifice born. Because when you look at Genesis chapter 4 verse 4, not every sacrifice born. The sacrifice of Cain was not born. So that's why God rejected it. He rejected it on the spot there. 
So don't let God, don't, don't use an altar that will lead you into anger of God. So the number three thing is that it must be a sweet smell savour. The sacrifice on this altar must be sweet smell savour. It must be something that pleases God. Something that God is happy about. God saw the sacrifice of, of Abel and God was pleased with it. There is a sacrifice that hit the hand of God that carried a sweet smell savour. And the Bible says in Genesis 8 21, and the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said, A sweet savour. The Lord smelled the sacrifice was converted to a sweet smell savour. So your sacrifice must be able to melt into a savour that please God. That is when it is acceptable. Hebrew 11 verse 4 said the same thing. Philippians 4 18 said the same thing. A sweet smell savour. God need to convert it to that. Anything you place on the altar will be converted to a sweet smell savour. To a savour. Yeah, like please God or not. What then? What are the benefits of altar of gratitude? Very fast. Number one, it avert cause of God and man. This this altar of gratitude has capacity to avert the cause of God and man. God was angry; He wiped away all men from the earth. But immediately Noah raised this the sacrifice. God changed his mind in verse twenty. After God smelled the sweet savour, and God said in his heart. I will not again cause the grant anymore for man's sake. And since that time till now, God avoid the cause finally. He refused to cause. So even though if a man cause a man and you read the altar of gratitude, immediately God smell this odor of sacrifice. He avert the cause totally of your life. You can wipe away all the causes of your life. They may cause your finance. They may cause your breakthrough. By the altar of gratitude, you can avert all out of your way. The number two benefit of this altar of gratitude. It secures supernatural harvest. This altar secures supernatural harvest. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. The Bible says, why the earth remains? See time and harvest. Simply mean, any time you drop a seed, you will have a supernatural harvest. It's secure, supernatural harvest. Not that you drop a seed and can woman and caterpillar will come and eat it. You can raise an altar of gratitude and some devourers are devouring every blessing around you. You will enter into the realm of supernatural surplus immediately. So you must know. Number three. It command generational blessings. This this altar command generational blessings. Genesis chapter nine verse one. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. And God blessed Noah. Not just God. God will never open mouth and just bless. The only place that God blessed freely is the first time when God created man. Since then, no blessing or come out of God without something provoking it. You provoke blessing from his mouth to, 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 to apportion it upon your life so that you can appropriate it upon your destiny. So it, it commands generational blessings. God blessed not only Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful. He blessed Noah and his sons. Your generation unborn can carry blessings. You can transfer it to them. And I see it coming upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is number four? It confers dominion over darkness forces. When you raise an altar of gratitude, you dominate every darkness interferences around your life and family. Altar of gratitude. Because why? God will say this one, he appreciates me. In my, in my traditional language, they say, oh, my more. This one is a grateful child. We need to do more. We must not allow any devourer around them. So we saw it in this chapter 9, verse 2. And, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall, shall be upon every beast of the earth. God put the dread and fear of Noah upon every beast that is on the surface of the earth. You dominate the affairs of darkness around your life. They will be pursuing you, you'll be advancing. They will be, they will be looking for a way to cast you down. They will be criticizing you, persecuting you, and yet they will not be able to stop your wave of glory. 
that simply means something is behind it something is behind it something still is behind it and i see god take you to that realm of dominion over every day satanic interferences in your life in the mighty name of jesus christ then number five it provokes supernatural provisions it provokes supernatural provisions it provokes supernatural provisions verse three every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the garden have as i give you all things and you shall be fruitful and multiply and bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply their end that is verse three combined together with verse seven it commands supernatural provision altar of gratitude when you enter into this altar you begin to command supernatural provision i command it into your life i command it into your business i command it into everything that concerns you from today i release blessing in the mighty name of jesus christ and number 16 is benefit of this altar it's secure life insurance by god god will insure your life you know we insure our cars we insure our houses even though in developed world they insure our lives with insurance i'm not talking of third party insurance that we do in nigeria yeah. I'm talking about insurance. God insured the life of a man. Look at Genesis chapter 9 and verse 5 to 6. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the end of every beast will I require it. And at the end of man and at the end of every man together, brother, will I require the life of man. Whosoever shed man blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in, this, for in the image of God made he them. That is life insurance. I will require your blood for anyone that tamper with your blood. If anybody dare to kill you, I will kill the person. If anybody dare to torment you, I'm going to torment the person. When you are grateful, child, I will come to you and ensure your life for you, ensure your destiny for you. I decree from today, every devourer around your life will see the anger of God. Your destiny is insured. Your life is insured. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, it established generational covenant of rest. It established generational covenant of rest. And God spake unto Noah, verse 8, Genesis 9, verse 8, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. It established generational covenant of rest. I see God taking you into the realm of rest. Do you desire rest in any area of your life? Go and go and check your past record, your antecedent, and you will discover that there are there are areas at which God has favor you. There's some significant blessings that you have enjoyed on the altar of God that you despise, that has robbed you of the next level that God is supposed to bring you to now. Where you supposed to be, that's not where you are, because you owe Him. You owe Him. I want you to go back. I pray for you this morning every dose of greatness that god has prepared for you by altar of gratitude i launch you into that greatness in the mighty name of jesus christ i launch you into that great dose in the name of jesus christ that testimony that god has prepared for you in 2020 you will share it before the end of this year miracle will hit you on every side breakthrough will come to your direction on every side in the mighty name of jesus it shall be well with you you are blessed and blessed in the name of jesus this is the voice of god's oracle bolarewa lucas the set man of oracle of god prophetic ministry i want you to join us next time as we also move forward in another episode god bless you shalom you are blessed We believe you were blessed listening to this message. For more information, follow us on Facebook at Oracle of God Prophetic Ministry Inc. You can also connect with our online radio on Mixler at OGPM. Download our message podcasts on YouTube at Lucas Balarinwa. And you can get our messages on Telegram at t.me slash slash Lucas Balarinwa. For prayers and counseling, contact us via the ministries line at plus two three four eight one four two. 
plus 234-814-242-115 or plus 234-7012-853-852 plus 234-7012-853-852 or you can email us at lucasbullerinwa15 at gmail.com. We love and celebrate.